The formative assessment design that I use is related to the work of Rick Stiggins. And he really is a founder of a lot of this thinking and has the most effective formative assessment techniques. When we look at the research of formative assessments, the way they got so much attention was when they were really focused on giving descriptive feedback to learners about what they needed to be learning and how they were learning it. And what Rick Stiggins shows us is how to really get to a three part structure that allows the teacher to take any assessment, any assessment I'm doing, it could be a test, it could be a quiz, it could be a project, it could have been any event, any tangible product or performance and turn it into a formative assessment event using a given three part structure. So this way, a teacher is not expected to write a whole new set of assessments called formative assessments. I take an existing assessment and then layer this structure upon it. The first part of the formative assessment has all of the learning targets that we wanna focus on. Now it might be all of the learning targets on the assessment, it might be part, but these are the skills right from the unit plan. And they could even have that alphanumeric structure right from the unit plan there numbered for the learner. So if it says I have to identify the characteristics of a cell, there it is as a learning target. So the child knows I'm going to be expected to list the characteristics of a cell. And then next to that learning target is an area for the teacher to give feedback to the learner about where they are in the process. So maybe it's completely correct Maybe it's completely incorrect. Maybe it's a minor error. Or maybe it's an area where I can have uh, feedback. So some versions might say the student is at standard, the student is approaching standard, and then there's a blank area where I can annotate the student work. Let's say it was a writing example, and it might have said uh, the student had to include an introduction. And the first box might say at standard, second box might say approaching standard and the third would be an area for me to give some annotated feedback so if i say they're approaching i might say i put an asterisk in your essay where the introduction should have been i couldn't find it or i might say for the introduction at standard I put a little annotation in your introduction inspired me to greater things and so in this sense, it's not a rubric. I don't need to have a four, a three, a two, and a one. I just need to say the child is at target, approaching it, and then give the child descriptive feedback about what they would do to improve. So that's part one. And that's usually filled out by the teacher, although in, in time, as a child gets stronger at uh, self-assessment, they might fill out a part one of a formative assessment. Part two of a formative assessment is a graphic organizer. It looks the same every single time, but what it has is the top part of the graphic organizer says, I know these. And so the child would go back up into part one and anywhere you said they were at target or at standard or completely correct, they would take that number and move it down into the graphic organizer. In general, we don't make them rewrite all of the learning targets. That takes more time and it doesn't really improve student performance. So they might just say number one, number two, number four, number seven, number eight, number 10, and number nine. The second part of the graphic organizer says, I need to practice these. So if you used the uh, part one that had minor error, something where maybe it was they need to practice their basic math facts because the actual math problem, they didn't get the standard wrong, they just added wrong at the end, or they didn't line it up, they need to practice diligence, okay? Or maybe if you picked the writing one and there was a part in the feedback where you said, you were so close, I just want you to go back on word choice. Those are the kinds of items where the child would say, you know what, I'm not at target, but I just need to practice. The third part of the graphic organizer focuses on, I need to learn these. So anywhere in the first part where the feedback to the child was, you, I couldn't find this element or it was completely incorrect. Now the child knows that target when we're doing direct instruction on it 
or if I can get some materials to learn it, then that's going to be the way to improve my performance. The thing about part two in a formative assessment is that it always celebrates the learning. The first one, I know these. We've gotten very good in the field of education at pointing out to children what they don't know. What we want to think about here is pointing out to them what they do know. The second element that's so important is that the negative feedback or the constructive feedback is separated into two categories. So instead of saying you got all these wrong, we're saying these are close, you need to practice, and these you need to learn. You want to make feedback, descriptive feedback, feel doable. You want the child to be able to look at the list and go, why don't I focus on taking those practice ones and moving them up before I take on the learning? Or if they're feeling very powerful, you say, you know what, I think I can learn these. It's three items, I can do it. That's the neurological mindset in terms of social emotional development that you want a formative assessment to create for a learner. You want to create self-motivation that way when they look at their data. Part two of a formative assessment is focused on giving the data to the student. Sometimes when we give grades back to children, they disregard them. Sometimes they're thrown away. Sometimes they don't mean quite what we want them to mean to children. They're not processing the data. Part two of a formative assessment is a commitment to the learner processing their data. The second part of the part two is a learning plan where the child is going to talk about next steps, <laughs> next steps to improve my performance. There was a time where we used to leave it here. but When we do that, children fill out this part with very interesting next steps, things like, I will try harder. I will study more. I will listen better in class. I will reread the text. These are not precise steps for improving their performance. They are things that children think you want to hear, and so they're not very good at organizing their own learning plan. It was this fact that led us to part three of a formative assessment. Part three of a formative assessment takes all of the exact learning targets from part one and it has them organized in exactly the same way. Only this time to the right, instead of having the descriptive feedback, what they have are learning strategies, precise ways that the teacher has selected that a child could learn that learning target or practice that learning target on their own. So for example, if it was something like how to add fractions, it might have watch this Khan Academy video on adding fractions and take notes on it. Take a sheet of easy problems and practice the problems until you can do them independently. Take a very challenging problem and work through it with a friend. Write down all the steps that you're doing to add the fractions and create your own problem. It might have work with a friend and generate five problems each and have one another practice on adding the fractions. Check your solutions. And then the last item in general is create your own because we do want students to think, how would I learn that target? Do I have a way that would work that maybe my teacher hasn't listed? These learning strategies are areas for differentiation it's these learning strategies that actually promote the learning process. And children get stronger, not only in their discipline, but in how they learn.